So this you recognize. <coughs> uh, so this is the US labor market, vacancy rate, unemployment rate between 2010 and uh, the end of 2019. So here you have 10 years of data. These are the last 10 years in the US labor market. Okay, so we've seen that work before. And so what each point um, represents is just one quarter <coughs> in the US labor market. Um, so you can see <coughs> here we have the first quarter, um, and that gives you the unemployment rate and vacancy rate in that quarter. And then as time goes by, the unemployment rate, 2010 is almost the peak of the, uh, so this is basically the peak of the Great Recession. And here, this is 2019, that's basically the peak of the boom just before the Covid recession. So this is the worst, we start from the worst part of the Great Recession and then we arrive at the best, the highest peak. Okay, so we start from the, <coughs> the lowest point of the business cycle and we arrive at the highest point of the business cycle. And this is just uh, what happened. Okay, and so this is showing you each quarter during these 10 years with unemployment rate on the x axis and vacancy rate on the uh, y axis. And what you can see is that there is a clear negative relationship between unemployment and vacancy. So here, if you want to see what is the beverage curve during these 10 years, it's very very easy. You can just um, you can just estimate the relationship between unemployment and vacancies. You can just run uh, a regression here that allows you uh, to get the beverage curve. So that's the estimated uh, beverage curve here. That's the estimated U.S. beverage curve. <coughs> for the US for the 2010-2019 period. So you can see that the match is very good. So un unemployment and vacancies are really along a quite a tight beverage curve. Now that's like a, a really solid empirical relationship. You know, like people some, sometimes say, oh, in economics, there are no laws of nature. You know, these are things that happen in physics where we have some well-established laws of nature. But in economics, there are no laws of nature. So I think that's, that's just not true you know if you look at the beverage curve it's very close to a law of nature uh, of course you know, from time to time <coughs> the beverage curve shifts but you can see that for a long period of time the beverage curve is really really uh, stable uh, so it's really as good it's a, as good a, of a law of nature that you would find in economics you know it's, it's really quite sturdy it's a sturdy relationship that you find very often okay so if you're looking at the US labor market, that will be your beverage curve for the 10 year period between 2010 and uh, 2000, the end of 2019. So now, let's say you're looking at this and you're wondering, oh, <coughs> what is, you know, I see that, what is my efficient unemployment rate here? C can I find the efficient unemployment rate? And the answer is yes, given the analysis we've just said. We've just said that the efficient unemployment rate is a point where the slope, um, where the slope of the beverage curve is equal to, uh, so the point of efficiency. We've said that the slope of the beverage curve must be equal to minus, sorry, uh, minus one minus z over r <coughs> where well, r is a recruiting cost and 1 minus z z is a, a social value of unemployment so we have a clear 
condition for efficiency, and that condition is very, uh, very easy uh, to find. So you know, we could uh, get some value for Z, we could get some value for, for R, and in fact, little later on, we're going to do it, and then you could find, uh, and then you could figure out exactly what, you know, where your efficient unemployment rate is. So for instance, imagine that, uh, so minus one minus Z over R, it's a negative number, right? Um, so imagine that uh, minus one minus Z over R gives you like a slope, say, something like this. Okay, so imagine that this is <coughs> minus 1 minus z over r. Okay, so let's say it's a, it's a slope like this. Okay, um, so you know that, that depends, this is just an illustration that depends on what is your z, what is your r. Okay, how do I find, uh, how do I find now the efficient unemployment rate, where it's the point where the beverage curve is tangent to that uh, to that line, because that line has a slope of minus one minus zero over r. So what you can do is that you can find the point where you're exactly tangent to that line. So we'll have that something like here. Okay. So you move your your line and you continue to move it until you get to that point here. So that's the tangency point. So you see at that point, uh, here I just took my line which is minus one minus z over R, so I have a line like this, and I've just shifted it out until I have just became tangent to the beverage curve. And at this tangency point, you know, the slope of the beverage curve, of course, is uh, V prime of U, and here we have V prime of U, which is just equal to minus 1 minus Z over R. So the efficient unemployment rate is going to be something like this. Efficient vacancy rate, something like this. Bam. Uh, so here you will have U star, in this case, you are around four uh, percent, and here you have V star. In this case, you are just about four percent. I mean, this is just an illustration to show you how you would find the uh, the efficient unemployment rate, efficient vacancy rate. Um, and in fact, because the tightness is V over U, actually, you can also very easily read the efficient tightness. If you take the point, oh, that's not the origin. Okay, my bad. Uh, Right, well, if, yeah, if we had the origin, we could just take the ray that goes through the origin, and that ray would have a slope that's V over U. Um, okay, so the tangency point here that we have, that's also the point of efficiency. So that's how you can find it uh, <coughs> in that case. Um, so if you have a bunch of points, you have your beverage curve, you can first estimate your beverage curve and then you, and then if you have that slope, the slope minus 1 minus 0 over R, uh, then you can just try to find the point where um, the beverage curve is tangent to the slope of minus 1 minus 0 over R. And then you have your efficiency point. Okay? Uh, so it's, it's just very, uh, it's very easy. And actually, so something that's good to know is that this line with a slope of minus one minus zero over R, that's actually along this line, the welfare of your economy is constant. So this line is what we call an ISO welfare line. And is always fair. And uh, why is that? Well, it's because think think about a point that's on this line. Okay. Uh, so what do they have? All the points that are on this line. Well, in that case, <coughs> what's true is that uh, if you're on this line, you know that 
the vacancy rate is equal to, so we know the slope is minus 1 minus z over r times u, so that's going to be your slope of that curve, plus, of course, there is some intercept, right, that, uh, that line has a slope, but it's also has a positive intercept, so let's say plus k. So we have this isowelfare line, we can rewrite it as um, minus 1 minus z u minus v times r is equal to minus k times r. So here what I've done is just uh, multiplied both sides of the equation that we had uh, by r. Now, minus k times r, uh, that's just uh, some constant, you know, it doesn't really uh, matter. So what we can say is that uh, we can rewrite the ISO welfare line, if you want, as uh, we can rewrite it because it's equal to some constant as 1 minus 1 minus z u minus v times r is equal to some constant and we can call that constant k. I just added 1 here. But 1 minus 1 minus z u minus v r equal k, this is just, uh, that's just social welfare. Uh, so this is like social welfare of u is equal to k. So uh, that's why we call this curve an ISO welfare curve because along the curve, the vacancies and unemployment are such that um, social welfare actually doesn't change. Okay, um, and so that's quite uh, that's quite a good interpretation. So this orange line that has to be tangent to the beverage curve, as we've said, it's a, it's an ISO welfare uh, line. So it means that all the points along the line, so let's say um, this point and this point. And this point, this point, and of course the efficiency point, and this point, all these points have exactly the same welfare. Okay, uh, so they hit exactly the same welfare. Now, question that's interesting is um, what happens inside our ISO welfare line? So all the points that are inside, so all the points here, do they have higher welfare or do they have lower welfare? Well, all these points, they compare the points on the line, they are a little bit below, so they have a bit fewer vacancies. Vacancies are costly because you need recruiters, so they have higher welfare. You can also see them as a point on the line with slightly lower unemployment. Unemployment is costly because unemployment means idle resources. So all the points that are inside, they have higher welfare. Than the point that's exactly on uh, on the ISO welfare line, okay? And so now what's the interpretation? Um, what's the interpretation of our tangency condition? Well, so we've said all the points inside of that line are higher welfare. So you would want to be as much inside of the line as you could, right? But the problem is that, so say if you're like, say somewhere here, let me show you. Um, So consider a line like the line I've just drawn. So this line that I've just drawn, it has higher welfare than the line that's than the orange line that we've considered earlier, that line here. Okay, that line that I've just drawn, the orange line has a lower welfare than the red line. Okay? So if I was a social planner, ideally I would like to be on the red line, which has higher welfare. So the problem is that the red line doesn't touch the beverage curve. So it's not, you know, it's not feasible, it doesn't, it doesn't um, respect the structure of the labor market, the matching function and all these things. Um, so basically I want to be as much inside as I can, but I still need to touch the beverage curve somewhere so I have a point that is feasible. And the line that um, as far out uh, as far inside but still touching the beverage curve is the tangency line. So this, the line that touches the beverage curve, the orange line, that's the line that 
is as far in as possible, so it has the highest welfare possible, but still well being feasible. So that's the idea. So what you want is to be highest welfare possible but feasible, and that you get that at the point of tangency with the beverage curve. Uh, so that's the interpretation for that um, tangency point. Okay. Um,